What's up everybody? Brett here and today is a glorious day. We've just got the teaser trailer, the actual trailer, for The Twisted and the Twilight, the new DLC for Total War Warhammer 2. Get hyped y'all because this trailer is awesome. If you haven't seen it yet, I think the first thing we're going to do after I'm done with my whole spiel is we're going to watch the trailer together and just chill. I'm going to shut up and we're just going to enjoy it. Then we're going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to talk about all the particulars. I've got the FAQ open down here. We can read some of that together as well. And just in general, just share the hype with me, y'all. I'm so stoked. December 3rd, I think the original uh, date that was being shown on certain things was December 9th was some of the advertisements. But December 3rd, so like a happy kind of early release date, it feels like. And yeah, price-wise, we're looking at 9 bucks if you buy it now. You know, 10 bucks. Not a bad, not a bad deal for this type of DLC, but it's nice to save that extra dollar. Okay, let's jump in. Two minute trailer. Let's go. Was that not epic? Look how sweet that is. Oh my god, that was awesome. Okay guys, and if you're not familiar with the lore, if you're not familiar with the characters, we'll talk about some of those together in a bit here after we read a little bit about them. I know a small amount about pretty much all the characters here, so I'd be happy to share that with y'all. But before we do that even, let's um, let's look at some of these screenshots too and see what we can see. We've got the sisters here. I'm trying to remember their name, like Maestra and like Astra, something like that. But they're kind of like yin and yang, like black and white. One is like kind and sweet and the other is like ferocious and violent. And they're really like people were debating whether or not we'd be able to see like a dual character take up one Lord slot in the same way that kind of like Skarsnik does with Gobla. But it looks like they're doing it. And I think we're seeing here maybe their start position in... This looks to be Lustria, the Golden Colossus. I think we're in Lustria here. Um, they start with some of the new units, the Great Stag units, which we'll talk about. You probably saw them in that trailer. Those huge stags. The, the They're basically like knights. It's like they're getting their own like heavy cav now on the, the Wood Elves. That's insane. I'm excited to play around with those. What else? Do, ooh, anything else that we can glean here? I know we'll get into this later as well, but they've... In recent like live streams, they talked about how the amber mechanic has been changed for the Wood Elves. Hallelujah. I'm so freaking happy. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll get specifics later. We've got Throt here, the Unclean, uh, the main Skaven uh, Lord for this upcoming DLC. We've got him riding on the back of a brood mother. He's got three arms. He looks so awesome. He's got his huge whip. He's got his, uh, his Taskmaster, like the collar that he grabs people with, and then his big sword. We've got other brood mothers in the background. I don't know if these little rat guys are... These look like they may be some sort of weird Regiment of Renown variant. Uh, but they've also got this guy. I think he's going to be a hero unit for the Skaven. A, another, like an actual Taskmaster hero unit. And then we have this Ethereal Stag unit. 
which I think is going to be a regiment of renown as well. So we've got the twin sisters here, the Sisters of Twilight, riding their forest dragon, which has to be like their penultimate mount for sure. What else do we have? Alarial. So I was actually surprised to see that she's been given a hero treatment, very similar to like Lord Croak. Um, she's going to have incredible magic. I don't even know what some of these, these spells are that I'm looking at, uh, but I'm sure she's going to be one of the most powerful spellcasters in the game, as she should be. In the lore, she is considered one of the, the most powerful magic users in all the world. So, can't wait to play around with her. It's going to be fun. They're also showing... Uh, I got the email just a little bit ago. If you have access to access, Total War Access, uh, you can get this new... Let me look it up real quick because I don't remember what they titled her. But she's a new hero unit for the Wood Elves. And, yeah, you get her by having access in, and having an account with them through Total War. They also have more great stacks. The Zotes. Guys, did you see the Zotes coming out of the forest? That was so awesome. Um, here we go. I'm pulling it up right now. The Glade Captain. They refer to them as the Glade Captains. I, in my mind, they're probably very similar to the Handmaidens of the Everqueen for the High Elves. I think that's what we're looking at here. The Zotes are one of my most hyped, anticipated units. It's funny because they're basically like reskinned dragon ogres. But I can't help it. I love these guys. And then these ladies, I don't remember what they call these, but they look like next level um, blade dancers. They look like they might have magic attacks. Their swords glow green. Uh, I'm sure we'll read about them in a bit here, but as far as like the lore on them goes, like I'm kind of uh, I'm unaware of that. This screenshot, this screenshot here has so much going on in the background. I'm trying, I know it's kind of a smaller picture, but even if I make it bigger, I don't know if you'd be able to see this, guys. And you might have to do it at home in your own Steam page. Uh, but, like, you can see this. This is some sort of unique broodmother with, like, oh, the Taskmasters are not heroes. I see they're, like, a group of them. There's multiples. Oh, they're a unit. That is interesting. Okay, so good. I, I definitely don't want to give you guys misinformation. And then the, I can also see here, uh, like I said, this broodmother has something on its back. Maybe it's some sort of crazy artillery piece. I don't know. But I'm excited. And you can see the Zotes up front, too, fighting. Oh, yeah. What is this guy's name? We're going to have to look that up. Uh, he's not a character that I was familiar with from the lore. He's like, I think he's got the mind of a Norskin trapped inside the body of a mutated, like, rat ogre. Who's kind of like undead and like, what an insane character, but he looks awesome. You can see some of the mutated rat ogres in the background, the big boys. And it looks like some special dryads here. I don't think they've even previewed this, but look at this dryad. It looks unique. This might be a regiment of renown, uh, but we know that Dryka is coming. She's like a dryad legendary lord. So maybe it has something to do with her part in the upcoming DLC. Alario with her butterfly wings looking spectacular. The knight's looking great. Something so cool about the way they bound through through battlefields. The spell weavers, so the lord options for the the uh, the casting class of the wood elves. They didn't have this before. It's very nice. And then the zotes, of course, front and center. They look great. I've seen old depictions of them that kind of look sort of lame. And I'm glad they decided to kind of do their own thing with the design and, and kind of really make it their own. Because they look they look wonderful. They don't look out of place at all. They're essentially like a dinosaur, right? It's easy to think, like, why aren't these guys on the Lizardmen roster? But they almost, like, I think they predate the old ones coming to the world of, uh, of Warhammer. So they've allied themselves with... Basically the earth itself by going with the wood elves. So we've got Throt here, Throt the Unclean. What is this? I don't know what this mechanic is. He's mutating something? I think that's what he does. I think he has mutations that he can apply to his units to give them buffs, but at certain costs. So we'll have to wait and see what how these mechanics all work. Um, but if he's near his starting position right now, that's pretty cool that he starts up there. I thought he would have started in... Yeah, because Tretch is right here. I would have thought he starts in, like, Hell Pit. 
He must start and help it. I don't know why he's on the other side of the map with like so few units, but I think that's the case. Okay, they're showing them on their unique griffin. It looks like these are, I don't know if these are unique tree men, but, or tree kin rather. I don't think so, right? No, they just have their unique kind of like green glowing color scheme. Very cool. Anything else? Nice close-up of Throt, the mutated guys, the broodmothers. We've got this guy. I don't know what his name is. I got to look it up. Um, but we're going to go over that in just a second. So let's scroll down here about this content. Introduces two new legendary lords for the Skaven and the Wood Elves. Each leads their own faction and features new characters, units, unique gameplay mechanics, and narrative objectives. The wild energies of the Great Vortex have torn a rift in the Dreaming Woods. Could this form the site of a demonic invasion? Sensing great peril, Queen Ariel of Athalorn dispatches her trusted emissaries, the Sisters of Twilight, to prepare the way for a ritual of closure. Catching wind of Ariel's plan, Throt the Unclean sense opportunity. If he can defeat the Sisters and capture the Elven Queen while she is vulnerable, perhaps he can harness her essence and cure the eternal pangs of starvation caused by his warp stone infused metabolism. Yeah, Throt like injects himself with warp stone, which is basically like radioactive cocaine uh so he ejects himself with that and because of that he's like really touched by chaos in a way and the only thing that he thinks can like satiate his hunger is by like consuming hyper magical people so once a single being they're literally two souls divided uh divided into siblings by the weave nystra okay not maestra nystra and arahan that's gonna be tough for me to remember i'll probably end up just calling them sisters often are two sides of the same coin. They work together in the service of Queen Ariel, marshalling the woodland warriors at her command, and cannot be slain unless both fall in battle. That's kind of their unique mechanic uh, in the lore. Is like, you kill one, but you don't kill the other, and then a few moments later, the other one pops up and like shanks you. It's like, that's, that's a pretty cool superpower. Uh, they must prepare the glade for Ariel's arrival and protect her as she performs the ritual. Okay. Forge of Daith. So Daith is a character in the lore who's sort of like, for me, he's a very like Tolkien-esque character. He's like the guy who forged the rings, if you think about it that way. So Daith, the master smith of Vol's anvil, will forge and upgrade unique items for the Sisters of Twilight. These items are crafted through incidents and dilemmas, which appear through the course of a Sisters of Twilight campaign. Very cool. I'm imagining something similar to the dwarven rune smithing mechanic, although it's being done through incidents and dilemmas which is in itself different. So hopefully that works. Units, Ario, the Queen of Athelorn, is recruitable as a legendary hero. She is a powerful spellcaster who is more than capable in melee combat too. I'm hoping they chose to do it this way. That way, every single Wood Elf campaign that you play, you have access to Ariel. I think that's awesome. If that's the way they've done it. I'm hoping she's not a unique legendary hero only to the sisters. Maybe that's the case in the same way that Lord Crack or Croak, I think is what I would like to call him, because uh, he's a big frog. Lord Croak is unique to um, to Gorok's campaign, although I feel like you should have access to him in everyone else's campaign. Spellweaver is the new caster lord. The Zotes, powerful monstrous beasts who have access to bound lore of life spells. Very cool. Uh, great Stag Knights, heavy Wood Elf Cavalry used to penetrate infantry lines and decimate lighter cavalry. And then Blade Singers are what they're called. Elite Sword Wielding War Dancers. Cool. I love the War Dancers. They're one of my favorite units on the Wood Elf roster. But they just don't hold up late game. Uh, and yeah, so sadly you end up using other options. Regiments of Renown, Wraiths of the Frozen Heart. Particularly effective for preventing cavalry from cycle charging or stopping a missile unit from retreating. These have got to be the ghost-looking uh, great stag units. We've got the Lost Sylvan Knights equipped with significant physical resistance. Or maybe these are the Lost Sylvan Knights. That would make sense. They would have physical resistance if they're ethereal. So yeah, I'm not sure what these guys are. Uh, Enigmas of Giran. Elite Zoets with, or Zotes, with more powerful spells from the lore of life. Cool. Maybe they have the power to like regrowth themselves or something. Now we skip down to Throt the Unclean. An eternal hunger gnaws at Throt, the master mutator of Clan Mulder. A lifetime of auto-experimentation has made him powerful, but his vastly enhanced metabolism means he must feed constantly to maintain himself. 
He is hell-bent on reducing the Wood Elf Queen to a magical pulp, which he will consume to satiate himself at long last. The Flesh Laboratory. All right, we're getting into his mechanics. Very cool. Molding muscle and bone like living clay, Throck can use his Flesh Laboratory to fashion hideous new abominations for the battlefield. Numerous augmentations can be stacked to make existing units perform in horrifying new ways, but flesh can only bear so much torment before the subject becomes unstable. Even sub such aberrations have a use, though, as they can be rendered down for valuable materials. More growth juice for the vats. Yes, yes. That is awesome. I'm so hyped for that mechanic. The mechanic... This mechanic is like the coolest one I've seen so far. Gorich. That's the big dude's name. Okay. A former general of Archeon the Everchosen once ignored his commander's orders and was sent to Hell Pit as punishment. There, Throt transplanted, transplanted his brain into the body of a rat ogre, creating an aberration of incredible speed, strength, and intelligence. Gorich is recruitable as a legendary hero. Okay, and it makes sense that he might be exclusive to Throt as he is kind of like a creation of Hell Pit. So, you know, flavor-wise, that makes sense. The Packmaster. Okay, so the Packmaster is a hero. He's a hero unit that performs a support role with AoE and targeted buffs. Summons wolf rats to the thick of battle and may be mounted on a brood horror. So brood horror is the big rats. Wolf rats are like basically the hounds that we currently have in the game. Highly mobile pack of beasts which come in poisonous and armor piercing variety. Sounds legit. The mutant rat ogres are the big guys. A large single entity monster adept at brawling. I didn't know if they were single entity or if they just came in like really low numbers. Uh, and then the brood horror of course. The huge, fast-moving monster, adept at punching through infantry lines, can also be chosen as a mount for Throt the Unclean and Packmaster heroes. I'm trying to think of what a good, like, I'm thinking like a, I don't know, it doesn't seem like they're going to have, uh, they're not going to be anti-large. I'm thinking like Hydras, but without the breath attacks. That's kind of what I'm thinking of as the role of the Brood Horror. It's a, it's a, it's a line breaker. It's meant to like break through, push through to the range stuff, and then shut it down. And, you know, do a lot of damage to infantry units. And the regiments here are Pit Fighters of Hell's Deep. Comes with a Berserk ability and can be used to effectively combat terror units. Hmm. Pit Fighters of Hell's Deep. I'm trying to think of what type of unit that would be. I'm not sure. Uh, More Skitters Hellion. Capable of summoning a localized bombardment of warp lightning. That's got to be it. Yes, that's got to be it. That uh, that kind of orange-colored uh, brood horror that we saw in the beginning. I was calling them brood mothers, I think. I think I was getting that confused in a different game. The Thing Thing has the ability to buff melee attack and weapon strength, but rampages self in process. Well, I'll look forward to finding those on the battlefield and learning about those. Let's go and just real quick, let's go to the FAQ. There's going to be additional information here. I'm not going to reread all this stuff. Uh, but there is information in here that is not on the Steam page. Stuff they're holding back for now. Um, talking about, let's see. They're going over the units right here. Discounts, all that good stuff. Remove all mods beforehand, please do. Got it. You can use them in both the Vortex and Mortal Empires campaign. Good, good. Expected that. Hope for that. Okay. I'm trying to get to the part, guys. I, I want to make sure we don't skip anything that's important. But they're talking about a lot of the same stuff that we've done already. New mechanics. They have the sword. Got it. Alright. Free LC. Okay. Or FLC. The Twisted and Twilight will be accompanied by the release of the Skaven Chieftain Hero. Okay. I'm, I mean... Weird, weird to like put a hero in there when you compare it to the fact that you're also getting malevolent legendary Lord Draca. More information will be released soon. I've heard Draica, but for me, Draica sounds right. I don't know. I'd, I'd be interested in hearing what you guys think is the correct pronunciation. Uh, but she is a evil spirit, an evil dryad who has like really long history with Durthu and stuff. I'm curious how she'll function in the game like how she gets along with other wood elves what will her like diplomacy penalties be all right what else 
Amber is no longer required for units or buildings, hallelujah, and all technologies that previously cost Amber have had the cost removed and been reworked. Eight new technologies have been added. These are the only things that will now cost Amber. Great. So Amber is for tech. It is no longer gained from controlling territories and instead awarded for healing forests, which is a totally new mechanic that I saw showcased on the stream earlier, and it looks fine. It looks good. So, in Mortal Empires, the Wood Elves still need to heal Athalorn and restore the Oak of Ages. However, to do so, they now need to travel the world and heal special forest regions spread around the map. Each healed forest will provide unique bonuses. One is on um, is in Lustria, one is in Northrend, uh, one is in Ulthuan. They're kind of really far apart, uh, but you can travel around using the Deep Roots, which they're about to, to mention here. So... A forest health can be built up over time through various actions, such by securing its borders and building certain buildings. Once sufficiently restored, a ritual can be performed to permanently heal the forest. And then after that, you don't have to control these territories anymore. Um, you can let it go. Like, you've got the benefits, according to the people who did the live cast. So every forest also has unique forest encounters, interactable markers that provide narrative choices and let the player shape how they heal the forest. As part of this system, new regions have been added to the campaign. Four to Mortal Empires and two to Vortex, giving the Wood Elves a presence on every part of the map. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. And traveling the Deep Roots, Wood Elves can now instantly transport their armies between forest regions using the new Travel Deep Roots ability. This ability comes with a cooldown. So that's cool. I mean, you could be playing as like Malekith, and then all of a sudden, you know, some Wood Elves pop out, and you're like, what the hell? It'll, maybe it'll, if the AI uses it correctly, you could end up with some really cool battles that you wouldn't have uh, had before. Anything else? Anything else here? No. But guys, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, just an enthusiastic look at the, the new DLC, all the stuff that's coming. And as there's new stuff coming out, uh, we'll definitely look at that together. So guys, and look forward. I, I'm not even 100% sure yet whether or not I still have early access. I definitely don't have like preferred uh, partnership access, uh, but if I get early access, I will, you know, of course, follow the NDA and such. But like, I'm looking forward to making videos on this content. We're gonna do a let's play. Um, I haven't settled yet on which of the four uh, lore choices we're gonna go with, but I mean, I love Throt's mechanics, but I'm definitely more of a Wood Elf type player. So we'll have to see. We'll figure that out. Maybe let you guys vote on that. Um, but when the time comes, we'll do a Let's Play, and we'll do some multiplayer games, and we'll have a lot of fun with it. But that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Brett. Channel's Good Talk Gaming, and as always, y'all, I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys.